Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I don't know about you, but you know what? During Thanksgiving, I'm, I'm the cook. I'm the chef for Thanksgiving at my house. And I can cook a pretty crazy, amazing deep fried turkey. Like I straight up go Cajun style. And, uh, and, and I have fed up to 70 people. Um, for either a Thanksgiving party or a Christmas party. I've, I've, I've cooked for all of our leadership. And you know what? I love it. You know what I love about it? I love to see the, the faces on our leadership team uh, or, or family and friends when they're just like, you know, sucking their fingers and just like, you can just see the joy of the Lord on them, right? Yeah, and it's just amazing. And then they, they ask for it every year, like, hey, you're going to do deep fried turkey this year? Um, and so my family loves the fact that that I'm a really good cook, and I'm not trying to brag, but I'm good. I'm good. I can tear up a, a carne asada like nobody's business either. Yeah, I can make it t- taste like a, like a cowboy ribeye steak, and it's carne asada. That's how uh, amazing I'm at making steaks and stuff like that. But there's a problem when I cook. You know what? Um, when I cook, the, um, the aftermath is not the greatest. You know what? You walk into my kitchen and, and you'll see sauces all over the stove and, and uh, you'll see vegetables on the floor and, and piles of dishes, right, Alexis? And they walk in and they're just like, every, my, my family just sits and just stares. At, and I, but I'm working it, you know, just like, I'm like, shh, you know, all the, all the, 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 the um, what do you call the spices? <laughs> everywhere, man. I got spices everywhere. My dog's walking around licking it all up <laughs> off the floor. And, but... I'll tell you, though it's a mess when they're looking at that, they have learned the messier my dad is, the more awesome the meal is. And so they have accepted the fact that when I cook, man, it's a mess. It's, it's a disaster. But when they're eating it and they're enjoying it, they get over As a matter of fact, now they say, you go on with your messy self, Dad. You go ahead. You do your thing, and we'll clean up for you. And I love that. That's, the, that's been the rule in our family. I, I cook, they clean. I cook, they clean. And I hate the cleaning part. I hate the messy part. I don't like it. After I see the mess, I'm like, oh, I want to walk out of here. But, but, but the process, but the process of me creating the mess was amazing because, you know what, I was in the rhythm of what I love to do, and I love cooking. It's, uh, it's, it's therapeutic for me. I, I love it. Uh, I, don't, I don't see it as a burden. It's just awesome. But then, you know, I started thinking, wouldn't it be amazing if we can just embrace the messes of our life? Like, what if we learn just to say, you know what, my mess is something that God wants to do something beautiful with. My mess is something that God wants not only for me to enjoy the the, the aftermath of, of the mess of it just being so good. How many of there's a ber- verse in the Bible that says, see and taste that the Lord is good. Come on. God wants us to learn how to embrace the messes of our life. Because the reality is this, is that, you know what? You have to face your mess whether you would like it or not. And so many of us can be in a position where we have messy finances, we have a messy family, we have a messy situation, we have uh, uh, messy kids, and I don't mean as in a messy mess, I'm talking about a mess of a situation. I'm talking about it is jacked up. Your family is a disaster. Your finances are a disaster. Your life, your walk with God is a disaster. I'm talking about that kind of mess. And, it's, and, it's, and it's, it's real stuff that we experience. And, and nobody likes to look at a mess. Nobody wants to deal with the mess. I don't know about you, but after I finish cooking, it's so good. I look at it, I just, I literally walk up to my room like, later. I, I don't want to deal with it. I'm like, see y'all later. You all can handle that thing. But I, I'm, and that's what so many of us do. We put ourselves in a mess, and then we don't want to deal with it. We don't want to face it. We don't want to address it. We just rather just walk away and not accept it. And, and, and you know what happens? The mess keeps getting bigger. Why? Because you got to cook again. <laughs> well, guess what? You got to live again. And you know what happens? Life piles up. It piles up. 
And if you don't address some of those realities, then you're going to find yourself in a place of sadness and hopelessness. And, and you're going to feel like, man, there's no sense of vision. There's no sense of purpose. Come on, when, there's, when you're disorganized, man, you don't know where to start. Why? Because it's chaos. And that's what happens with us. We can put our life in such a chaotic mess that we start feeling this oppressiveness, which the enemy will love just to take a foothold on that. And then when you live a mess, it's just like you don't know where up and down. You're just, it's, you're lost. And you're just like, God, what, what do I? And then you're just disillusioned. And then you get disconnected. And then you start blaming God for it. And the reality is that we created most of the messes that we're in right now. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be messy. <laughs> it comes, listen, I, I have learned that, that every, every single mess we're in has a greater meaning. There's a greater meaning to your mess right now. I don't know what your mess is, but there's a meaning that's greater than your feeling. There's something deeper that God's going to do with that mess. You know, when you walk into my kitchen on Thanksgiving Day and you look at my house, you may be like, oh, my God. But once you eat my food, you're going to be like, oh, it makes a little sense now. I get it, man. <laughs> yeah. That's what life should be like. Like, yeah, you may be in a mess, but let me tell you something. Soon you'll see the meaning of that mess. Soon you'll realize that that mess has a message behind it. That mess has a story that's going to glorify the living God. I'm telling you, God wants to do something amazing in your mess. God wants to take that mess and he wants to use it for a platform for him. It's not even for you. You know what? When I cook and, and I make my mess and everybody eats, it's amazing how the talk of the night is all about the food. I love hearing that. Why? The people talk about it. Man, they're talking about, man, wasn't that drumstick amazing? That was the most juiciest. I want people to talk about my life that way. Man, did you see what Mauricio went through? Wow. Do you see him now? Man, he's still going. He's still pushing. He's still pressing. Wow. He's been through this. He's been through that. Man, he's been through the fire. But good Lord, the guy's still going. That's what God wants people to say about you. Man, you were so down on your lowest point in life. I remember when you looked oppressed, you looked sad, you looked, ah, uh, just didn't want to get near you. And all of a sudden, you're just changed. What happened to you? Why? God takes that mess and makes a message out of it. And then people just start saying, like, man, I remember you. I remember how lost you were. I remember how cray-cray you were. And now you're just different. There's something beautiful about you. Every say, embrace your mess. I wish I can say as a pastor... That my greatest moments of God encounters have been in church. I, I honestly wish I can say that. Now, there have been amazing moments in church. There have been amazing moments at Elevate. But, but not, not that I can say, like, like, my most amazing moment was on a Sunday morning when I preached. And, no, no, let me tell you something. My greatest moment, moments have been in hospitals. For example, and you can look it up on our live stream, in uh, 2015... Um, I, uh, I went to a hospital, and, and there was this young lady, 23 years old, 24 years old, who was hit by a vehicle. And when, when I got there, I didn't even know this family. I just, you know how on Facebook there's like these, you know, if you're a friend of someone, you can see their friend's stories. It's the whole storyline. And, and I saw the story about this young girl who was hit by a vehicle, and her picture was on Facebook. That, I mean, that's pretty, I, I don't know how people can do that, but. Praise God, God knew what he was doing, right? And so this girl's got, she's got tubes everywhere. You know, her brain is just, it, she was brain dead. And, and I went to the hospital, and I remember walking into that hospital room, and I took a friend of mine who's a worship leader and, uh, from Mexico, and I said, hey, grab your guitar, and uh, let's, let's go over there, and let's just, let's just go do some worship. He's like, do you know them? I'm like, nope, I don't know these people. We're just going to go there and tell them that, man, we serve a big God and that God can do something in this situation. And uh, I can tell you, we were in this hospital room, and, and the situation was a mess. The cables were a mess. Everything was just a mess. The doctors basically said to the family, hey, listen, it's probably best for you to pull the plug. She's brain dead. I can't fix this. No one can help you. It's, it's nothing. And so we convinced the mom, don't do it. 
We told her, I'm telling you, just wait on God. And so the greatest moment was us just in that room. You would think it would be a whole moment like this, right? We all have great worship, and we're like, we got the smoke, the lights, and we got great singers. And No, man, let me tell you something. It was me singing while my friend was playing guitar. Oh, yeah. And we sang for one hour to this girl who was brain dead in the hospital and it was hopeless and the facts were the facts brain dead but we we said god we know that that with men this is impossible but with you god we know that all things and we just started worshiping god and worshiping god and worshiping god and nothing happened but it was awesome it was an incredible moment why because you can feel the presence of god in the midst of a mess you can literally feel the presence, the tangible presence of God. As a matter of fact, while we were in there, we were in there by ourselves. And then the mom decided to come in with her, with her daughter, her, her sister. And, and she walks in. And all of a sudden, they just kneel by the bedside by their daughter. And they're just tears are streaming. Not because they're looking at their daughter. Because they said, we feel something special in here. It's God. It's amazing. And let me tell you something. Um, we left, we left that day, nothing happened, and we're just like, well, it doesn't matter. But the next day, this, this girl who's in, who's in a coma, who's brain dead, gagged. And that was the beginning of a miracle. And if you go back, and like I said, go watch our live stream, I, uh, I said, you know what, watch. Uh, we're going to see this young lady standing on here, and she's going to testify how God did the miracle in her life. And guess what? We had her here Christmas of 2015 testifying. The, wo the woman, the girl that was brain dead right here on this stage sharing her testimony how God got her up out of a deathbed. Let me tell you something. Those are the greatest moments in your life. When you're in your greatest mess, God can do something with it. So it's learning how to embrace it. It's learning how to accept the fact that my mess has a meaning. Now this girl, she shares her story. Why? Her mess was, was obviously very, very messy. But now she has a meaningful message about a God who saves, a God who heals. And uh, I'm telling you, if you want to bring some hope into someone's life, go to our live stream. Go watch it. We have the whole story. We did a video. We had the video when she was just straight up just looking dead and she was because I would touch her body frozen cold just cold but how many know that God does great miracles you got to accept that truth man when you do that I'm telling you amazing things happen are you guys with me all right look right, let me take you to a word right here Psalms 40 ready you ready yes, nobody wants to get dirty huh but the reality <laughs> is you will get dirty Look at this, Psalms 40, verse 2 and 3. It says, I was sliding down into the pit of death. Come on, sliding down on what? On a mess. Sli Have you ever slid down a muddy hill? Oh, it, it, it gets nasty, especially wearing white pants. Help us, Jesus, right? And he pulled me out. Who pulled you out? Who's going to pull you out of your, your, your messy, slippery slope? God is. Look at this. And he brought me up out of the mud and the what? Dirt. I love how he uses mud and the, dirt. come on, if you got some dirt in your life, God can pull you out of that dirt. Oh, yeah. See, he can pull you out of your mud. Mud, you, you may be stuck right now in life. He can pull you out of stuck. Maybe you're dirty right now in your life. Unclean living. He can clean you up. You know what I'm talking about? Got very uncomfortable in this Holy Ghost church. He set my feet on a what? He gave me a firm place to what? He gave me a new what? To sing. Come on, God wants to give his people a new song to sing in the midst of your mess. And look what he says. It is a hymn of praise to who? Our God. And many people will see your mess. And what he has done and will worship him. They will put their trust in the Lord. God bless all three of you. <laughs> three of you are getting this. That's awesome. I love it. Listen. I love what it says here. He says, and many people will see what he has done 
and will worship him. You have to come back to the place of God's grace and say, you know what? This mess I'm in is going to bless somebody else. And they are now going to begin to trust God. I mean, our life should have meaning. And our meaningful life should also bring meaning to someone who has a hopeless life. You know, on Tuesday night, I was up late uh, doing some counseling. And, and uh, man, it was heavy. It was like heavy, very just heavy. And it looked hopeless. And it was just, but let me tell you something. But as you begin to talk to these people, you're just saying, hey, listen, be vulnerable. Like, hey, we've been there. I, I've had that moment. I've had that situation. We've been as a family in that mess. And let me tell you something, but God can Turn your mess around. God can do something beautiful with that mess. And you know, and as they're, as they're hearing this, they're like, they're like accepting it. Receive, and you start seeing just the hope. When, you, when you've been through something and you can share that mess with someone else, it becomes a great message for them of hope. And, and listen, and also uh, this expectation that if God did it for you, I, I, I know he can do it for me. But we have to be more vulnerable and be able to share the mess that you're in right now. Don't just wait for your, your victory. You know what? Preach while you're in your mess. Share while you're in your mess. You know what? Stop being the Christian that, that when you're asked, how are you doing? Oh, everything's going great. Praise God. No, you know you're in a mess. It's, it's being vulnerable. Like, you know what? Right now, man, I'm either in mud. Or I'm dirty right now. I need some prayer. And when you can do that, let me tell you something. That makes the enemy take the hold or, or the grip off your life. Why? Because you know what? Now you're being open and vulnerable. And, and God, listen, you're being honest to God with, with him. And, of course, don't share your stuff with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because then you're going to, like I preached on Sunday, you're going to have people start throwing rocks at you and condemning you and everything. You remember that whole sermon, but we won't get into that. But, but God, wants, God, wants to, God wants to rewrite your story. Like he wrote on the ground on that sand. <laughs> Come on, on that dirt. <laughs> he started writing hope. Come on, he started writing healing. Come on, he started writing deliverance. There's so much that God does with this. As a matter of fact, look at, look at John chapter 9 with me. Look at this. Look, John 9 verse 1 through 7. I love this. He says, as Jesus went along, he saw a man who was blind. He had been blind since he was born. I love this. Look. And Jesus' disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? Was this man born blind because he sinned? Huh? Look at this. Or did his parents sin? <laughs> Whose dirt was this? Huh? It's amazing. When I got cancer... I had some precious friends that I love. They said, what sin are you involved in right now? I'm not kidding you. What did you do? Because God, maybe God is teaching you a lesson. I wanted to just upside slap them up. I'm not, I just like, are you crazy? Are, are you serious? I'm going through pain and you're asking me, what did I do? But that's, that's the world we live in. It's a messy world. And look, and so it, he says, it isn't because this man sinned. What's wrong with you? Said Jesus, it isn't because his parents sinned. This happened so that God's work could be shown in his life. While it is still day, we must do the work of the one who sent me. Listen, listen. While you're still alive in your mess, you must do the work. You can't just be, uh, when, when are you going to serve? Well, when, when our family, when we get better, then we'll serve. No. No, no. While it's still day, we have to keep moving. We have to keep going. We have to keep growing. You can't stay stuck. Your God of heaven, Jesus himself, he said, I will pull you out of this mud if you just accept the fact that you're in a mess. But out of this mess, I'm going to make a beautiful message. And so he goes on to say, listen, night is coming. Then no one can work. In other words, while you're still in the light, while you're still able to wake up every morning and you see the sun rise, come on, that should be a new day for you. 
that should be a day that, say, that you can say, God, okay, man, I, I'm going to embrace the mess I'm in, but I'm not going to waste the day. While it's still day, I'm going to go and I'm going to share my faith. I'm going to share the love of Christ. I'm going to share my story. I'm going to do whatever it takes for me to do, because when you're able to do that, let me tell you something. I truly believe that miracles begin to happen. God starts doing things. He, does, he starts doing supernatural things that you, listen, you need to get God in your mess. You need to invite him in your mess. And you need to say, God, save me from this mess. And he will. And I love this because he says, he goes on to say, we must do the work uh, of the one who sent me. Night is coming, then, then no one can work. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the what? The world. world. After he said this, he, he spit on the ground. He made some mud with spit. Then he put the mud on the man's eyes. And he said, go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means what? Scent. Huh? What does God want to do with you? He wants you to embrace your mess and then give you a message and then send you on your merry way. And he sent. So the man went and he washed and he came home able to what? Listen, can you imagine how awkward this was? Here's the blind man, right? Can't see. And all he hears is. <laughs> And Jesus, he, 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 he grabs his mud and he's like, and, and he starts mixing it. And he says, get over here, bro. And that guy's probably just like, and can you imagine the next, not only what he heard, but can you imagine what he started, he's, he's, he's feeling spit, man. He's feeling, like, what is that? L listen. God wants to get in your dirt. And, and he, he, he puts mud. Look, what does it say? So he put the mud in his eyes, right, the man's eyes. And he said, now go and, and you wash in the, in the pool of Siloam, which means sand. And so he went and he washed and he came home and he was what? Able to see. Listen, I love what the story says. He, he's in this bad place. He's blind. The disciples are talking about who sinned, who did this. Listen, Jesus is not concerned what you did, but he's concerned about where you're going to be next. He's concerned about what's going to happen next. We can sit here and talk about all the things we did, and that's all right. You can do that. God will work on you. He'll talk with you about those things. But you know what's more? He wants to go ahead and grab your dirt. Come on, dirt is nasty. Look, if you look at this dirt, it's disgusting, man. There's all kinds of stuff in it. Nobody wants to play in dirt. Pigs play in dirt. It's disgusting. And you know what? Without us even knowing, some of us, we look like this right now. We look, we look, we look dirty. Our life looks dirty. Our, our, our families look like this. Our marriages look like this. Our finances look like this. And we're just like, but you know what happens? Jesus, Jesus looks, and this is what I love. As I started reading this, I'm like, man, you know what? Why did he spit on the dirt? You know what I say? You know what? Jesus spits at the attacks of the enemy. He spits at it. He just says, pff, pff. I'll do, sorry, that was real spit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, me, Jesus. It's anointed. Anybody want some? <laughs> right? You know what? In other words, I truly believe there's so much revelation in that verse where he spits at whatever we're dealing with. But let me tell you something. His spit is holy. His spit is righteous. As a matter of fact, think about it. He uses his own DNA. Come on, the Bible says that the water is like, the, the word is like what? Water. And you come to Jesus, man, I'm telling you, and you start hanging with him, and God just starts cleaning you up. He starts just doing something precious and new. And you know what? We look dirty, man. All of a sudden, now you're clean, you're pure. But I love what the scripture says because you know what? As this guy is right there going through this, Jesus says, you know what? It wasn't necessarily the sin of his parents. It wasn't his sin. You know what it was for? He says, this happened. Remember, say, this happened. Yeah. Say it to yourself, this happened, Maudie. So say to yourself. This happened. This happened so that God's work could be shown in his what? Life. Some of us are so caught up on why did it happen? 
Why? Why, God? Why did I have to go through that? Why did I have to feel that? Why did I have to experience that? Let me tell you something. This happened so that the work of Almighty God can be shown in your life. That's why this happened. That's why. That's why. The sooner you accept that, the sooner you'll be healed. If not, you're going to get funky. And you're going to start getting weird about it. You know what I'm saying? This, why did this happen right now? You may be in a bad situation. You know, as I was talking to this family and different, they always say, like, well, well, why did this happen? It didn't matter why. What matters is that it did happen. And you're stuck with, why did it happen? Well, it happened. And you can't change what happened yesterday, but you can change what could happen right now and mañana. You can do that. What do we do? We come to the washing of the water of the word. You come to Jesus. He is the word. In the beginning was the word. He is the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And nothing was made that was made without God. Come on. That's what God wants to do. He says, you come to me and I will spit on you. (laughs) Oh, yeah. It's holy spit. Praise Jesus. Holy spit. For some of us that haven't been delivered from that, just say holy spit. Holy spit. Yeah, when you're in trouble, like, holy spit. And you just, like, call on God right there, like, holy, like spit on this thing, God, right now. Huh? I'll change your words. Come on, somebody. I'm giving you a whole new language. Huh? Let's all try that. One, two, three. Holy spit. Yeah. Next time, so, and you watch, man. God will get in that mess. God will get in that mess. Come on. Our dirt is what God will use to create your miracle. Our dirt is what God will use to create your breakthrough. Our dirt is what God will use to create a substance that can literally change your life. God needs substance. He needs something from you. So many times we focus on, on, on well, what's in your hand? Well, uh, I have a talent of singing. Okay, great. That's awesome. That's always positive. Yay. Well, how about well, what's in your life? Maybe your life right now is full of mess well guess what God can use that too just say God this is the mess I'm in right now this is all I have right now and God will say cool bring it to me let's make something out of it boom puts it on you and you know what I was blind but now I see and maybe right now you're so blind in your mess maybe you're so you're so lost in your mess maybe right now you just don't know what to do I don't know if should I go left should I go right you know what you should just go to Jesus just go to Jesus this man now he's he's walking away healed he didn't even know who healed him he just heard that's all he heard and then he went and he washed and 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 then he's healed and 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 here's what happened look In John 9, verse 8 through 11, he says, His neighbors and those who had earlier seen him, who had earlier seen him what? Begging. Who had earlier, come on, the people who had earlier seen you jacked up, depressed, oppressed. The people who had earlier seen you not looking so great, so awesome, asked questions. Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg, they asked? And some claimed that he was, and others said, nah. Man, he only looks like him. Talk about a transformation. But the man who had been blink, blind, I'm sorry, kept saying, hey, I am that man. What's wrong with you? I am him. Hey. Then how are your eyes open, man? How is that possible? How is it that you can get out of this mess? How is it that you can come out of a deathbed? How is it that you can come out of this pile of debt, man, and now you have a thriving business? Now, man, you have a thriving family. How is it that you can come out of this mess? And he says, hey, listen, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and I washed. Then I could see. Listen, there's, listen, if you have no mess, you won't have any mercy. No mess, no family. Guess what? In every family, there's a mess. Are you listening to me? No mess, no growth. No mess, no miracle. No mess, 
No ministry. Help us, Jesus. I always tell that to pastors. Hey, listen, man, ministry is messy. Why? Because it involves people. <laughs> and people can be messy. And people can get dirt on you. But let me tell you something. No mess, no message. Now this guy has a message. And people are asking, what happened to you, man? What, weren't you that blind guy? Yep. <laughs> What happened to you? Well, let me tell you my story about Jesus. He started sharing his faith story about what Jesus did for his life. Well, you know what? I met this Savior, man. His name is Jesus. And, man, I was at a really bad place in my life. And, you know, he spit on me. Man, all I heard was, and all, man, I just heard a spit. Listen, God wants you to hear something new at this hour. Some of you have not allowed the Spirit of God to speak to you. Why? Because you're so in your mess, you haven't given God an opportunity to speak. Your ears are clogged with mess. God's saying, listen, stop, embrace, accept that you're in the mud, and just listen, and you're going to hear a new sound, and it may sound like this. But know that I spit on your mess, and I will do something with your mess. And I'll make something beautiful out of it. No mess, no miracle. No mess, no family. No mess, no growth. No mess, no awesome career. No mess, no awesome breakthroughs. No mess, no awesome life. No mess. This life is messy. Accept it. Embrace it. But let me tell you something. But without Jesus, you'll never come out of that mess. You'll never come out. You'll stay there for a long time. And you can go to many people, but listen, but nobody has the power to wash you clean but Jesus. He's the only one who can wash you clean. He's the only one that can get rid of your dirt. But you got to come to Jesus. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.